Hello. Right. I've had a little rest from earlier. I've had a little rest and something to eat. I'm raring to go again. Right. I've found, found more information out. Um, it's more on the parents of the little boy, of Elijah. The parents and the boyfriend. Uh, there was during court yesterday for bail hearing, but it was cancelled literally two hours before it was due to happen. So the being in court today, I've got that. Right? But then last night, I knew it, it always happens. It's because of the time zone. Because of the time zone. Last night, as I was going to bed, I've seen someone on YouTube talking about Elijah and they had this two rivers police department page up. I thought, no, 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 too late. I'm not doing it now. I'm not going back online. I'm not doing it. It can wait till tomorrow. tomorrow. Plus I'll have more information to share. So I went to bed knowing this and I thought, no, I can't do it. I can't. I've got to go to bed. Right, now as you know from yesterday's one, the police are not giving out any information and they've even sealed all court documents apart from the one today because the cameras were in there, right? And um, but they, I don't think they're actually giving any more public updates. They're not going to stand there in front of cameras and give any more public updates. I don't think. But 20 hours ago, they released this on their Facebook page, account. Right? Now, let me know what you think. Right? I've got my opinions on it, but I'll, I'll let you, people, let me know what you think. Right, release date, February the 22nd, 2024, 7.20pm. Well, 7.20pm, I didn't have five, six hours on that. It's about 12pm, earliest here. You know what I mean? I'm shattered by then. Anyway, here we go. It says, we understand there are a lot of emotions involved in the ongoing ongoing search for Elijah. No, there isn't, is there? I didn't know there was a lot of emotions going. Elijah has not been located and is still missing. We know. We are working closely with state and fed, federal agencies and we're only releasing information that we are able to do to without jeopardizing this ongoing and multifaceted investigation. Hmm. Some might be frustrated. Yep, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm frustrated. Right? However, everything we do is well thought out and planned in a combined effort with our main with our main priority in locating in Loyalty. Okay. I understand there's gonna be Parts where you you can't give out to the press and the public. You can't. I understand that. But by not giving us anything at all, then the press and the public are going to start making up their own ideas about this. And that's when... Uh, untruth facts get exaggerated, you could say. Anyway, carry on. The press briefing was to give facts and dispel rumours as well as to let you know that factual information will only come from the two rivers police department. That's fine. I only believe anything that comes from the police anyway. I don't believe anything else. 
and this I hear and see from my own ears off the plea or from co some court judge saying I don't believe it. Right? The press, oh, right. the key RPD to the Rivers Police Department will continue to update the community with any facts and information that are able to be shared. If Elijah is located, we will share that information. Oh, believe me, you won't need to, because if he's located, whoever locates him is going to be straight onto YouTube, straight onto Facebook. We'll know before you even release it. Immediately after receiving the 911 call and based upon the circumstances, officers began searching for Elijah while we contacted the WI Department of Criminal Investigation, the FBI, a child is missing organisation, National Centre for Missing and Exploited Children. Yes, because they they deal with a lot of um, children that are well, trafficked. They've got all the contacts there. We requested a missing and endangered alert, an amber alert, a ring neighbourhood alert, use local emergency alerts, contacted all municipal and county agencies for assistance, sent out Facebook requests for public assistance, brought in drones from drones from Manitowoc Police Department and Manitowoc Sheriff's Office, canines from Manitowoc Police, Manitowoc, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that word correctly, forgive me, I'm English. Manitowoc, Manitowoc Sheriff's Office and Shibogo Sheriff's Office. An air search for from WI Army National Guard as well as boats and UTVs from Two Rivers Fire Department and Manor, Manitowoc County Sheriff's Office. I'm sorry, but it sounds like you're trying to keep it all in-house, you know what I mean? Get on to, oh God, what is that organisation now? And I swear to God, they will be in those rivers, they will be in them forests and they will find that little boy. They will find him. If he's in the forest or in the rivers, they will find him. Equisir, get on to them. That is their main job. That is what they do. And they do it for nothing. It's all run by donations. Right? We are exploring all possibilities to locate Elijah. No, you're not, because you haven't got equisers there. We all have them there. They are brilliant. We are into our third day of searches of Elijah and any assistance from the public will aid in our efforts. Well, the public did ask about using their own uh, dogs right, for searching and their own drones, and you said no, because it would interfere with police and their dogs and their drones. Okay, so they did ask. Right, here are some things you can do to assist, even outside of two rivers. But that doesn't count me in because I'm well outside of two rivers. Check anywhere a small child could hide, climb or fall. Yep. I was watching a, video, a YouTube today of the searchers. I think it's from either the second, first or second day. Okay, they're looking for a child, right? But... I swear to God, if I'd be out in the forest looking for a child and I'd seen a bunch of branches and sticks by a tree or uh, um, whatever, I'd be knocking them out, flattening that ground. 
because he could be under there. You're looking for a little boy, and they're walking past piles of sticks and branches which could be hiding the body. Because I, I'm sorry to say, I don't, I'll be surprised if this little boy is alive. Personally, I don't think he is, and I'm sorry to say that, but that's just my intuition, that's my feeling. Right? Well, check your own property for any items that don't belong to you, which could include anything from Elijah, the red, white and black plaid blanket, or dinosaur printed shoes. Well, it would only be one dinosaur printed shoe now, because you've already found one of them, which we know it was. Check your surveillance systems from February the 12th through to February the 20th. Apparently, they say they always look back this is what they say. We usually look back several days from the Liverpool Hub to ensure we are thorough. Several days is three. Not eight. You're going back eight days before he went missing. Hmm. We usually look back several days from the report to ensure we are thorough. Okay, I'll give you that. Look for any anyone matching Elijah's description in your surveillance footage. You can also search public land for the aforementioned items or anything you feel relevant to this investigation. Please do not touch anything you find, but instead contact the tip line at 1-844-262-6666. Or two rivers police depart dispatch at one nine two zero six eight six seven two zero zero immediately. You might and this is the only reason I put this out today because of what uh reporters have seen. This is why. You may have seen searches search areas such as local rivers and landfills, and that is correct. We will leave no stone unturned. We will continue to see small, large-scale searches as we receive tips and continue our search for Elijah. For those of you who have shared information, thank you. That's okay. As we learn more information, we may recontact you for continued assistance. Don't bother contacting me. I'll carry on. We have a very large police presence in our community from local, state and federal authorities. We have no indication that any of the children or individuals in the community are in danger. I don't think there is anywhere, no. I don't think any other child is in danger. I don't. And you'll know that as we go on. Authorities are working around the clock, following up on tips and information that would lead to us to find in Elijah. We have some of the best resources in the country that have descended on our community to help locate Elijah. Jesse Rang, Rang and Katrina Burr have been arrested on an allegation of child neglect. Mm, we know both Rang and Burr, Burr will have bail hearings at 12.40pm on Friday. Well, I've got that bail hearing. I've got it. At the Mankarok Tar Tarok County Courthouse. Due to victims, why we cannot release any further information on these charges. Too bad. We heard it all in court. Right? We will continue to update on the search for Elijah as we are able to do so. Factual and up-to-date information will only come from the Two Rivers, Two Rivers Police Department via media re release or our Facebook page or press conferences. I think the only time they will do another press conference is if something major happens. Which I can understand by doing a press conference, you are taking away uh, time, the police could be doing other things. So I understand this. Thank you to everyone who has assisted in the search for Elijah 
and continues to serve Sir Elijah, as that remains our top priority. Thank you to the Two Rivers community and our local businesses for your cooperation and continued support. Chief Ben Monarch, Monarch, Two Rivers Police Department. Right. What do you all think of that? It's told us nothing new. Told us nothing we didn't already know. Why? We know he's missing. We know his, his mother and her boyfriend were arrested. The boyfriend was arrested on the Tuesday night and the mother was arrested about between 3 and 4 a.m. Wednesday morning. We know that, right? And it's on child neglect charges. Right? He's on child neglect. She's on uh, helping or, or letting it happen. You know what I mean? She's on the charge of letting the child abuse happen. I can't think of the correct wording. Right? So we know that. We knew about the search in the uh, tip. We knew about that. We knew about with searches on the river. But that is a big river. And it needs a good sonar organisation to go out there on the boat with a sonar. And because sonar hits the bottom of the water, right, and pans out. And then pings off the sides and come back. And that's how they get the build up of the water underneath, right? The river, the river. I can't get that word out. The river base. And as it's pinging, it pings against any object in its way and sends it back to the screen where they can watch it. You know, certain organizations like Exu. Acu search, Acu search, right? They have done so much in that sort of work, as we know with oh, Aubrey Cunningham, right? And other cases before, they know what is a rock and what is a body. They know. So you need people like that out on the rivers with equipment like that to search them rivers properly. So, I don't know what everyone thinks on this, but as I said, it didn't say, tell us anything we didn't know. It really didn't. They're not telling us, they wasn't telling us anything about the mother and the boyfriend, why they was arrested, which we know now. Um, they're still saying they're asking for people to search properties. Yes, I admit people do still need to search their properties because some people don't. Because they think, no, nah, he wouldn't have gone in there. He wouldn't be there. He wouldn't be there. But you don't know. If he's wandered off and he's got tired and cold, he's gone to somewhere dry and warm. It'll curl up and go to sleep, you know what I mean? Somewhere dry and warm. And when they curl up, they curl up very small. A three-year-old will curl up quite small. Right? So you have to look everywhere. But when I was seeing these searches walking through the woods, I thought, you just walk past a pile of sticks and branches. You just... Nonchantly... Walk past that. Why aren't you stopping and searching? On your, why aren't you moving these branches out of the way? Because they're looking for a little boy who's alive. But they can't do that. They've got to look for a little boy who could be, who is alive, but could also be unalive. Do you know what I mean? Because if he's wandered up into the forest, he could have got onto some. Uh, brambles, some wood, some sticks to keep warm, to hide, to keep dry, keep out the wind maybe, curl up somewhere. You don't know. So you need to, all these sticks and brambles and branches and whatever else, 
needs to be moved. It needs to be searched. Leave your phones in your pocket. You don't need your phone while you're searching. That was some else of seeing them walking around with the phone in hand. What are you doing with a phone in hand? It's not going to help find the little boy. Put the phone away. Get your hands out and start moving the branches, the twigs, the whatever. Get on hands and knees if you have to, but start actually looking. Well, I know they're not trained people, but come on. I will be moving every twig, every branch, every bramble, every pile of leaves, anything. I will be moving. I'll get a big long stick and just knock it all out the way. I'll make it all flat so then people can see, okay, that, there's nothing there. If they come past again, they can see there's nothing there. But they're not, they're just walking past them and I'm thinking, come on. It's three years old. We're now going into the fourth day. The fourth night. You know what I mean? This is not looking good. It really isn't. Right? Okay. There's a little boy found a few weeks ago. You know, that, that's a setup. He was placed there. Because no way was he there for two nights when it had rained and bitter cold. And yet when they found him, he was dry, he was clean, everything. He'd been placed there and told to stay there until, like a game of hide and seek. He'd been placed there. But because he's non-verbal, he's autistic and non-verbal, they know he's not going to be able to tell anyone what actually happened. But this little boy is three years old. There's pictures up in my corner, and every time I do a live, that little boy's picture is going to be in my corner. So everyone will see who we are talking about at all times. All right, so we found that, I came across that last night, and I thought, well, I'll talk about that tomorrow. No. I, there's so many questions that I was asking, like, who's, who's this caretaker? Who's this primary carer? Right? Well, I found some information out today. <sighs> oh. Oh, hang on, I've already got that one open. Yes, I have. Don't worry. Elijah Vu, parents. Meet mother, Katrina, boy, and father, Jimmy. Oh, oh, bah, bah, oh, boy. Bah, 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 oh. I cannot pronounce words. Forgive me, please. Right. There's another beautiful picture of him. Looks like he's in a car seat. But he's happy, he's smiling. Right? That's how little boys and little girls should be. They should be happy and smiling. Right? We talked about Elijah first. You know a lot about Elijah, but here we go again. For those who are coming back and watching on replay, I will always go over Elijah, who he, who he is and everything. Elijah Vu is a three year old boy who went missing from his home in Two Rivers, Wisconsin, on February the 20th, 2024. His, disappear his disappearance sparked a massive search effort by the authorities and the community, as well as an amber alert for his safe return. Right? But who are Vu's parents and what do we know about them? Here are some facts about his mother, Katrina Barra, and his father, Jimmy Barra. Katrina Barra, the mother who reported him missing. I didn't know that. Because it said the caretaker. Who the caretaker is, I do not know. But I've got a feeling I'm going to find out in this. 
Katrina Akbar is the mother of Elijah Vu and the person who reported him missing to the police. According to the Two Rivers Police Department, she last saw him around 8am at their residence in the 390 block on Michigan Road. Right? She said she left him with an adult caregiver whose relationship to Elijah is unclear. Yeah, it is unclear. We don't know either. And went to Wisconsin Downs with her boyfriend. Hmm. She claimed she had no contact no contact with Elijah or the caregiver until she arrived, returned home about 11 a.m. and found him gone. Yeah, that explains it. That just explains why a three-year-old was not seen for three hours. Explains it, doesn't it? It just explains everything. She dropped him, she left him with this caretaker, caregiver, adult caregiver, and went off for a few hours with her boyfriend, come back to find your van. Okay, fine. That explains the three hours. Now explain to me how that little boy got out of that, out of that flat and out of the block. That's what I'd like to know. And who the adult caregiver was. Right? Now, don't forget, The address the police have on record for her boyfriend is the address where he was last seen. So when they left him there, they left him with, was it a relative of her boyfriend's or someone? Because someone mentioned a 15 year old who lived with him. I don't know. Right? Anyway, she found him gone. Hold on. Hold on. I'm just going to scream at my cat. Hold on. Hold on. I'm just going to mute. Go on. Right, let's continue. Where was we? There. Now we've got that beer. This one. Right. So that explains the three hours. Easy, isn't it? Yep. Easy. Okay. Fair enough. We understand now why we why you know we're seeing in between eight and eleven. Because you left him and gone off with your boyfriend, but you left him with the care caregiver. Wouldn't surprise me if you left him there on his own. And that's how he got out of the flat. Right. Katrina Barra was taken into custody by police on February the 22nd, 2024, and booked into the Manitoba County Jail. The reason for her arrest has not been disclosed. We know. But the police said they are investigating her whereabouts and activities in Wisconsin down. Yes. They had their phones on them. Surely it would be pinging wherever they went. As well as part of as a possible involvement in Elijah's disappearance. A man named Jesse Vang, who lived at the same address of Katrine and Elijah was also arrested on the same day. His role in the case is also unknown. Unknown. Well, I thought he lived at that block, but the address the court's given today for Katrina is totally different to that. Totally different. So that's confusing. Right? Or is it her, his parents that lived there and he used to live there with his parents? And he now lives with her at her place, and they dropped him, uh, Elijah, off at her, his parents. Possible. 
listen to this, this is good one. This is this is the mother of the year. The mother of the year. Katrina Bar has a criminal record. No, she doesn't. Oh my lord. Dun, dun, dun. According to online court records, she has been convicted of several charges, including theft, disorderly con conduct, bail jumping, and drug possession. She also, also has an open case for, guess what? Guess what? Seeing. Child neglect, which was filled in December 2023, filed in December 2023. So that's an ongoing case still. The details of this case are not public, but it may involve Elijah or his siblings. Well, I don't think it involves his siblings. Because she's got, I believe, I read, she's got three or four other children that are all in care. And then again, perhaps it does involve the siblings from back then. Perhaps that's when she lost your other children back in 2023. Right. Here's a thing about, right? Nine, Elijah Vu. Age, three years old. Mother Katrina Barra, father Jimmy Barra, siblings not known. Missing date February 2024, current status still missing. Now, I knew the father was already in prison. I knew that. Well, we're going to read this. Jimmy Barra is the father of Elijah Vu and the husband of Katrina Barra, who is currently serving time in jail according to his family members. The details of his incarceration are not known. No, we don't know. And unless it involves Elijah, I don't I don't really care. Unless it's got anything to do with Elijah, I do not care. But he has a history of legal troubles as well. He has been convicted of charges such as battery, domestic abuse, resisting arrest and violate, violating a restraining order. He also has an open case for child abuse, which was filed in November 2023. So one case of child abuse, CA was, oh, is this CA, isn't he? So he was charged, he had got an open case for CA from November 23, and she's got... Uh, child neglect, open case for child neglect. What is it with this woman? Why is she always make, going with men who I children? I B U S E D children. Come on. The details of this case are not public, and so it shouldn't be. Not if it involves the child. No, it shouldn't be. I'm sorry. But it may be related to like Elijah or his siblings. Right, some more. Jimmy Barra has not had contact with Elijah or Katrina for years, according to his brother. So it obviously has got nothing to do with his. CA from November 2023, it's got nothing to do with Elijah then because he's, he's had no contact with Elijah or Katrina for years. We're only you know, November, December, January. We're only going into three months now since the charges were put against him and he's had no contact with Elijah or Katrina for years. So that can't have anything to do with Elijah. Sorry. Add it up, it doesn't make sense. Orson Vu, according to his brother Orson Vu. Orson Vu is the uncle of Elijah and one of the family members who have been actively searching for him and posting updates on social media. 
He said that Jimmy and, Con and Katrina have been estranged from the rest of the family and they have not seen Elijah or his siblings for a long, a long time. He also said that Jimmy and Katrina have four other children who are currently in foster care. Thank God for that. Thank God. Let's just hope these four children are in good foster care and they're getting the support, the care and love they need, they deserve. Right, goes on to say, Awesome View has been trying to, to do... I'm getting tongue-tied today. Awesome View has been trying to dispel rumours and misinformation about Eliza's case and to keep the public attention on finding it. I'll done. I'll be right back. I've got to sort my cat out. Hold on. Oh, where are we? Yeah. I've been, oh, God's sake, get back up there. Right. I'll be right back. Right, I'm back. I don't know what's up with my cat. Right, let's continue. Where was we? Right. Awesome Vu, the uncle, has been trying to dispel rumours and misinformation about Elijah's case. What rumours and what misinformation? We haven't had no information. The only information we've had on you, well, as far as I know, is from the police and to keep the public's attention on finding him. He said that he and his family are cooperating with police and that they are hopeful that Elijah is alive and safe. He also thanked the community for their support and prayers. But you see, the police aren't giving the family any information either. They've said that themselves. So if they're not giving you any information, they're not giving the public and the press information. Well, uh, let's continue that. The search for Elijah is still ongoing as the police and the community are using all available resources to locate him. He is described as having dark brown hair and brown eyes and wearing grey sweatpants and a long sleeve dark coloured shirt and slip on shoes with red and green dinosaurs. Well, you're only looking for one slip on shoe because we've already found one. He may also have a red and white clay blanket with him. He is of Hmong and white ethnicity who speak both English and Hmong. Right? We'll continue. Oh, God. I need a drink. The police have asked the public. Hold on, just some coffee. Oh, it's cold. The police have asked the public to check their properties and surveillance properties for any signs of Elijah and to report any tips or sightings to them. They have also warned the public not to spread false or unverified information about the case as it could hinder the investigation and I agree. There shouldn't be no false information. It's only, it will only hinder the case. Only. 
and it annoys me because it it's upsetting for the family as well. You know what I mean? Upsetting for the family. And they have said that they are following every lead and exploring every possibility and that they are determined to bring Elijah home safely. Now I'll tell you something in a minute once I've read all this. <sighs> Elijah Vu is a three year old boy who deserves to be found and reunited with his loved one. Yes, he does. His parents, Katrina Barr and Jim Barra, have been involved in legal and personal issues that may or may not be connected to his disappearance. I don't think the father's got anything to do with it. The father's in prison. You know, you know what I mean? But regardless of their background or situation, they are still his parents and they're still worried and hopeful to... Uh, this is... I must admit, I read this earlier and I, my jaw hit the floor. Right, then it says, they're still his parents and they're still worried and hopeful for his well-being. As the search for Elijah Vu continues, let us keep him and his family in our door. I'll keep him, his uncles, his aunts, his grandparents, and all that I'm, I'm in, the, in my thoughts. But as for the mother, no. The father's in prison, so I don't know about him. I can't say anything bad about him. I only know about the mother, really, and how she's been reacting, and what I've heard. I, anyway, so that was that. So that was about the mother, the father, um, nothing much about, when was this done? Uh, February the 21st, that was the, um, Wednesday. Right, so, so that was Wednesday. So I'm not going to play that. That's his aunt, I believe. Elijah Vu's family member. I think it's an aunt. And I believe she was the one in court today. He gave a statement out. And look at his face again. Look at that beautiful little boy's face. Smiling, happy, healthy. Little boys. Little three-year-olds have tantrums. They have meltdowns, right? Because they don't understand it when you say no. They don't understand the word no. Why they why they can't have this or why they can't do this? They don't see danger. So when you say oh, baby, don't do that. That can hurt. Let's start having a little meltdown. But I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to jump on this plank so it smacks me in the head. You know what I mean? They don't see danger. So when you're telling them no, they don't understand. And so if you say no to a child, you can't just say, say it's my, my grandson, Ellis. He's a, he's a tank. He's a little tank. And he's 24-7. He has his meltdown, but that's different. But this guy, as you say to him, you'll say, Ellis, you can't do that because, and you tell him why. And they'll go, but I want to do it. But Ellis, if you do that, you're going to get hurt. I don't care, I want to do it. But Ellis, you'll end up in hospital. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm still going to do it. I'm, and I'll go, Ellis, please don't do it because you will get hurt. That you're going to fall off it, you'll hurt, you can break your leg or arm, right? Or you can sleep and hurt your bum, and then you'll be moaning all day, like your bum's hurting, your back's hurting, your arm's hurting, everything. You ask him not to run because he'll fall over. What does he do? He runs and falls. 
My granddaughter, she's three. She trips over fresh air. I miss to God. She can't walk without tripping over. And I go, tripping over fresh air again, I oh, will, Olivia. She trips over fresh air. Nothing. But she'll, she's down. But she's a good little walker, apart from her constant falling over. Sometimes she don't fall over all the time. But this is, all I'm trying to say is children have their moments. And you take the good with the bad. And believe me, in take the bad as just enjoy the bad as much as the good because time flies that quick. They've grown up and you think, Where's my baby gone? Where's my babies? You know what I mean? They're not little no more, they've grown up. Where's my babies gone? So enjoy I, that's what I'm always saying, enjoy the time you have. I love spending my time with my granddad. It makes up for the time. Well, I was always with my kids, but it takes me back to when my kids were little. It's going to kill me when they grow up and they're not little no more. Right? But now that's it. Right? So, let's get, oh, that's this one. Honestly. I'm glad they're looking into the Wisconsin Downs because their phone will be pinging around there. So they'll get the information they need for around there. Right, there's just some else I wanted to look at as well. This is it, right? I'm done. I'm going to get back to the beginning. Uh, I think this might be the video where I see them walking past a, a pile of sticks and where they just buy two eggs. I'm thinking, come on, move the sticks. God. Oh. continues for this little boy, three-year-old Elijah Boo. The boy's mother, identified as Katrina Bauer, is held in the Manitowoc County Jail tonight. She is facing recommended charges of being party to child neglect. Over the past several days, community members have pulled together to help search. Last night, family, friends, and concerned residents gathered for a prayer vigil. They prayed for Elijah's safe return. Here's what we know about the case. Three-year-old Elijah Boo was last seen at 8 o'clock on Tuesday morning. He was in the 3900 block of Michicot Road. Elijah has dark blonde hair, brown eyes, weighs about 45 pounds, and is 3 feet tall. He has a birthmark on his left knee. Fox 11's Emily Matasek has been in Two Rivers all day covering this story and joins us now live. Emily, what else have you been able to learn out there? Yeah, Michelle, there's still many more questions than answers in the disappearance of Elijah Vu. The Two Rivers Police Department has not said anything today as this community continues to search for that little boy. A teddy bear surrounded by candles is sitting outside the building where Elijah Vu was reportedly last seen Tuesday. A Two Rivers Police Department squad sitting watch too. I have three of my own and it hits my heart. It breaks my heart that this little boy is missing. And if I can do something to help, yeah, I will do it. Community members once again showing up in Two Rivers to help search for the three-year-old boy. I mean, if it was my two little girls, I'd want everyone out looking for them. I can't imagine how this family is feeling. Boo's disappearance bringing local, state, and federal authorities to the table. We captured plainclothes officers going door-to-door -door in the 3900 block of Michicot Road and surrounding area. One resident telling Fox 11 authorities were interested in any security camera footage they may have. The continued search and investigation comes as Katrina Bauer, a woman whose family of Boo has identified as his mother, is being held in the Manitowoc County Jail. Bauer and Jesse Vang, whose address in court records matches where the boy was last seen, were supposed to appear in Manitowoc County Court Thursday afternoon for... Right. 
Stop someone will know what this is. Right? In court records matches where the boy was last seen. Ah. Oh. Come back. Come back. Come back. Uh, is that a gang? Number. You know what I mean? Whatever it says, nine two. Is it a two? Or oh, nine two zero? Is that like um, a gang? <laughs> Number perhaps someone could put it in the comments if they need records matches where the boy was last seen were supposed to appear in manage Park County Court Thursday afternoon for a bond hearing. Vang is being held on a requested charge of child neglect. Bauer is being held on a requested charge of party to child neglect. Authorities not saying why the hearings were canceled, only telling Fox 11 they could appear in court on Friday. Searchers interested in the hearings, but more focused on trying to find Elijah Vu. I'm hopeful because you have to be hopeful. In situations like this, you need to be. And I tried to speak to Two Rivers Police today. They are the lead investigative unit on this case. Uh, they were not willing to speak with us and said it said to keep our eye on their social media accounts that they would be posting any updates there. For now, we're live in Two Rivers. Emily Matesic, Fox 11 News. Emily, thanks so much. Keep on it. Police also stress that no tip or bit of information is too small. Anyone who may have seen Elijah or know where he is, is urged to call the number that you see on your screen, 844-267-6648. The search for three-year-old Elijah Vu is in its third straight night. I have three of my own, and it hits my heart. Fox 11's Brady Meyer is live for us outside of the Two Rivers Police Department tonight. That's where the chief released a statement on Facebook less than two hours ago about the search. And Brady, you read through that statement. We read through that statement, and it doesn't give us anything you know what i mean it doesn't give us anything you are search for elijah as they did last night police are asking the public to remain vigilant continue to check their property and surveillance cameras uh, we know also know that katrina bauer identified by family as elijah's mother along with jesse vang are behind bars both are due in court tomorrow afternoon Bauer is uh, being held on a recommended charge of party to child neglect, while Vang is facing a recommended charge of child neglect. Chief Meyer did not say when police will provide another update, but whenever we get it, we should have provided for you uh, both here on the air and uh, on our website on fox11online.com. I'll be back as well tonight at 9.30 and 10 to continue to share more from what uh, Chief Miner uh, had to say in his update. But for now, reporting live in Two Rivers, Brady Meyer, Fox 11 News. All right. All right. Now you've heard that, right? And we've read the statement, which I don't think gave us any more information that we, than what we already knew. Now we go for the highlight. Right? Come on. Failure to appear in that would be issued. You have the right no, I'm going to appear in one. Oh, come on. Or the last two to have. Oh, it's not. Right, we'll start from now. There's no sound yet in a minute. I think she forgets there's no sound. They will be saying. So I'll have to let them in. All right. Uh, we will have a couple of in-person return on warrants. We're going to take care of the two individuals that everyone is interested in first, simply because then we can let the cameras and um, media folks leave. So our first individual is Katrina Bauer. Ms. Bauer is referred for party to a crime neglecting a child. There is a probable cause statement. At this point, this is referred for charges. It is not yet a complaint. 
and um, it is just that charge. Just I don't know what the public is expecting to happen today, but I just wanted to set everyone up that this is this is probably going to be disappointing to what you think. This is the charge. This is what we're dealing with. All right, Attorney Larson. Oh, I'm not going to be disappointed because this is the first decent piece of information we've been given. <clears throat> Ms. Bowers' address is 920 Race Street, Apartment 203, Wisconsin Dells, 53965. She does not currently have a telephone number. Her date of birth is 12 9 of 92. Um, she is currently receiving SSDI and therefore is not employed. Uh, she has a history of making court dates except for two occasions. Uh, in 2017, she had a bench warrant issued, but two days later it was withdrawn without a hearing. Um, then she had another uh, missed court in a CT matter and that was restored to a signature bond within a week. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll hear from the DA, and then my understanding is there are some victims that wish to speak. They do have a right to speak on the subject of bail only today. And then I will give Attorney Larson the last word before I make a decision. Attorney LaGree. Commissioner, the state is asking for $15,000 cash bail. We're asking for no contact with the co-defendant, Jesse Bang. We're also asking for no contact with any children under the age of 18. Judge Deeds has already found probable cause. That was done yesterday with an affidavit um, submitted to the judge. So probable cause has been established by a circuit court judge. The state feels that the cash bond is warranted based upon the facts that are listed in the affidavit before uh, your honor, as well as the fact that she intentionally sent that child for disciplinary reasons for more than a week to the residence. She was aware of the tactics used and the lack of care provided. Uh, this was an intentional thing by her. And on that so she sent his, her son to that guy for a week for disciplinary reasons at least two occasions um, during the interviews she has been provided false information on her whereabouts during the past week so there is a concern of providing false information to officers so there is um, additional charges of obstructing that will be coming she does not reside in manitowoc county she does have um, as attorney larson referenced so prior matters. She has 17 CT 752 out of Allegheny County, where I counted four missed court appearances. Um, February 1st, 2018, where a bench warrant was authorized. Uh, that was returned on warrant February 9th. February, May 16th, 2018, bench warrant was issued. Return on warrant was May 23rd. On August 14th, 2018, failed to appear for the plea hearing. Bench warrant authorized. Return on warrants October 19th, November 6th, 2018, failed to appear, bench warrant, return on November 15th. Then in 17 CT 236 out of Allegheny County, there was a missed court on June 21st. The return on warrant was June 23rd. She also had two prior disorderly conduct convictions, one from 2015 in Allegheny County and one from 2011 in Winnebago County. I think. She, based upon her lack of ties, the seriousness. Well, we've just been told who the mother of the year is. And the prize goes to, yes, Katrina Barra. Just the offense, the prior missed court appearances, that a significant cash bail is warranted. And I would ask the court to impose that with the other conditions requested. Thank you. And I'll just review it was the no contact with persons under the age of 18 and no contact with the co-defendant. Correct. All right. Thank you. All right. So at this point, the victims um, that wish to speak can come up. You need to come up to one of the microphones. You <coughs> need to identify yourself. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
my family and I are requesting a no cash bail. Um, they are the last two to have seen our baby Delisa. And at this moment, are the current suspects. So until we find the truth as to the whereabouts of Elijah, we would like to make sure that these two are readily available for questioning. Um, and in the case where bail is given and made, we ask that the person on bail will have no contact with anyone under the age of 18 years old and the family of the victim. And that's all I have. Now, in this case, they always have a bail hearing, right, before they have uh, he, um, before they make actual any charges or something like that. So they like to know they've got that person inside locked up, nice and secure, before they put charges. But um, they also they always give bail. They all set bail. Right, but they make it quite high and they make it cash bail, which means you have to pay cash. And if you're going to for 15,000 or whatever, then you're not going to get the bail, are you? You're not going to get that money. Thank you. <coughs> Someone else? Or no? All right, that's the only victim that wishes to speak. Attorney Larson. Commissioner, I would just indicate that Ms. Bauer does not have any cash to post. She does receive SSDI. She does qualify for an attorney through our office, and she has no significant assets. Um, I understand that she lives in Wisconsin Dells, but she does reside in the state. Um, and she will appear at all future court dates. We ask that the court take those factors into consideration. This court has neglect charges before fairly regularly. This case, though, has drawn the attention because we have the missing child involved. And that, of course, pulls at the court's um, feelings and emotions and heartstrings for the care of the child. But it doesn't change the nature of the charges from any other neglect case. I think we have to keep that in mind too, that that's what we have right now. I've seen the probable cause statements. I know there's more specifics about the alleged behaviors, um, tactics as I believe Attorney Labrie referenced it. I suspect that as charging decisions are made, there could be other charges added. The mother, though, is not present. She knew that makes it the party to the crime or um, enabling the behaviors. The lack of immediate ties to the community are something I can consider the likelihood that there would be additional misses uh, while the family is saying low cash bail they want the individuals to be available um, if they're in the jail potentially they are available now the other consideration besides the alleged crimes I'm uh, to also consider the ability of a person to abide by the conditions, which means are they able to post? And it would not appear 
that Ms. Bauer on her own is able to do so. I do not know if she has resources as she reaches out to her extended family that would be able to assist her in posting bond. Um, I thank Attorney Liberty for mentioning that Judge Dietz had already taken care of citing the probable cause statements. There's no doubt that the information does meet that standard. I am going to set cash bail. At this stage, the $15,000, while substantial, is also appropriate. I'll set that amount with the two conditions, no contact with any persons under the age of 18, no contact with the co-defendant, Jesse Bay. And everyone knows the name, so I'm just going to use it. I don't think there's any point, and we don't usually protect the co-defendant. Um, we've been putting the names in the documents. Now, the next hearing will, of course, be on Monday. Following usual practices, I don't know where we'll be on Monday, but um, for court, that will be in branch Moving to three, are we not on Monday? Yes. Uh, February 26th, 130 Branch 3. Failure to appear, a warrant would be issued. You have the right to be represented. As noted, public defenders will be representing, um, at least at this stage. And um, I believe that's everything. So thank you. You can leave the room. All right, we are prepared. We'll go back on the record. This is Jesse Bang. Mr. Bang is referred for child neglect. There is a probable cause statement. I'll just jump ahead and assume that Judge Deeds signed probable cause on this matter as well. I don't have that copy. Uh, that is the only charge here as well today. Attorney Larson. Mr. Bang's address is 3918 Michicot Road, Apartment 2 in Rivers. His phone number is 920-242-4289. His date of birth is 1-4 of 84. He is currently um, self-employed. Uh, I looked at CCAP over the past 10 years. There was a 2012 case. There were no misses. It also appears that he's on a federal detainer or federal supervision. I have heard that um, bit of information as well. Attorney LeGree? Commissioner, the state is asking for $20,000 cash. We're asking for no contact with it. the co defendant, no contact with any children under the age of 18, as well as absolute sobriety. The defendant, um, as the court has noted, probable cause has been found by Judge Deeds already. Uh, he was the actor that was here in the community um, dealing with the victim and um, utilizing the discipline and the tactics as well as the lack of care. I think there is quite sufficient probable cause that has also been confirmed by the judge in the affidavits that have been submitted. I am concerned about his appearance in court. Uh, he has recently been convicted in 2017 in federal court of conspiracy to distribute methamphetamine. He was incarcerated for approximately six years as a result of that and was on supervision when this occurred. 
I believe there is currently a hearing, but that is also being reviewed. Um, he does have prior record in addition to that. He had an OWI first in 2023. In 2007, he had a felony nail jumping out of Bonapini County where aggravated battery and battery were dismissed and read in. He failed to appear for his arraignment on May 23rd, 2008, and the return on work was May 22nd, 2009. So he failed to appear for court and did not return for a year later. He also has from 2007 a disorderly conduct, 2006 resisting and obstructing out of Bonapini County. That same year, possession of cocaine, a second and subsequent out of Allegheny. In 2004, delivery of cocaine out of Winnebago. That same year, possession of cocaine out of Allegheny. In 2002, battery by inmate. Also that same year, a child abuse out of Allegheny County, as well as a fleeing officer. He has been incarcerated a significant amount of time over the past um, several years. He also, while on state supervision in the past, has had three separate abscondings in 2009, 2004, and 2003. He has contacts or family in, in California, Michigan, and Minnesota, so he does have um, resources outside the state of Wisconsin. I think a significant cash bond is warranted. I would ask for the $20,000 cash with the no contact with the co-defendant, no contact with any children under 18, as well as absolute sobriety. Um, there was a reference in the probable cause affidavit to consumption of alcohol. So I would ask for that, that condition as well. Okay, well, Brie, I just want to verify my understanding. Um, this federal decatur is based upon the, and it's super Provision, so it's much like a probation hold in Wisconsin. It is similar, but he does have um, rights to a hearing, and I believe there was a hearing today. I don't know the results of the hearing. All right, thank you. Okay, at this point, if the uh, victim wishes to speak on uh, this case as well, if there's another victim, uh, this would be the time. No one has to, but this is the time if you want to. All right. I'm... You think that? Okay. All right. So, uh, Tony Larson. Commissioner, the nurses and that uh, Ms. LaBerry cited occurred over 15 years ago. Typically, we take those into consideration is referred as a child neglect. Obviously, we're aware that um, there's questions about whether it will remain as this charge, but currently it is this charge. He is on federal supervision. He is not going anywhere. When the state is asking for 20,000 cash on a child neglect, I think that signifies that the federal uh, authorities are not going to be releasing him anytime soon. Um, he does qualify for an attorney through our office. One will be appointed, um, but we are asking for a significant, significantly lesser cash. Well, in one uh, way, I've already set the $15,000 on the other individual. So we have a precedent for today's purposes and it is clear to me that taking the probable cause statement as true for today, he is the one who was present and would be responsible for any neglect um, resulting in the child being missing or the lack of care. That being the case, we'll set the two thousand, uh, the twenty thousand dollars. He also has a greater ability to flee and not appear. I don't know how the detainer will work. Uh, the twenty thousand dollars cash, absolute sobriety, no use of alcohol or drugs, any kind, anywhere, um, in any amounts. 
No contact with any persons under the age of 18. Just to make it clear, if there is a 17 year old in custody, the jail rules are um, will apply to that. That's not going to uh, be affected by this provision. This is when you are out of custody. Additionally, no contact with Katrina, with Katrina Bauer. Violation of any of the conditions would be grounds for additional charges. The initial appearance will be February 26th, 130 Branch 3. Failure to appear, a warrant would be issued, and you do have the right to be represented by a lawyer. With that, you may leave the room. Now, that is the end of these two cases. I am going to allow... Right. Um, we'll get that one. We'll get that one. Right. Come back. Right. That's everything I have found out today. Well, in the few hours I had this afternoon, plus having a little break myself. But the information of tends to come out once I go to bed because of the time delay. So I'm going to leave it there because neither of them are getting out. Neither of them because they're both cash bound files. Right. And at least they know where they are. The police know where they are. I think, I don't think it's an umbrella situation where the child has wounded up and gone missing. I don't think that. I, in my opinion, I think the mother and the boyfriend have got something to do with this. And you get, you've only got to look up at their past criminal records. You know what I mean? Child neglect, CA. And all that lot. It's not nice. It's not a good. It's not painting a brilliant picture. And this lot. Let this. Oh, yeah, I'm going to show it in bits again. This little boy needs more. He needs the love and the attention and the care to have that smile on his face to not worry about. If he has a little tantrum, he's going to be smacked or told off or screamed at or anything like that. Because three-year-olds do, four-year-olds do, five-year-olds do, six, seven, eight, nine, ten-year-olds have tantrums. And any parent who complains about their child having tantrums, tantrum, so think about what they were like at that age. Because I can assure you those having tantrums as well. But now they're growing up and they've got children, they don't want their tantrums, they don't want their children screaming and wanting this and wanting that. You know what I mean? Well, don't have children. Because tantrums come along with children. Part and part because. So if you don't want that, you don't have children. If you want to spend your days uh, chasing the dragon, then don't have children. Simple. Because this little boy is doing nothing but go... A child will give love unconditionally. They don't set conditions. It's like, it's like a parent's like, well, if you do this, I'll, I'll love you even more. No, you don't set conditions. As parents, you love them unconditionally, and a child will love you back unconditionally. You don't set conditions and boundaries. Well, boundaries, yes, there are boundaries. Now, you have to set boundaries with a child because they have to know the right and wrong. They have to. 
but there's a, a way of doing that. Right? There is a way of doing that. And I just think this is not looking good. I'm sorry. It's not looking good. Because I'm sure if that little boy was somewhere safe, I'm sure she would just say, look, I've gave him to this couple or I've put, he's here, staying here for a while. You know what I mean? She'd say so. Otherwise, that's the only way she'd get out of jail. But she's not saying anything. Well, not that we know of. Not that we know of. Because the police aren't giving us anything. Let's see if there's anything on their page. Can I refresh this? I can refresh this. Oh, God. Ah, uh, that we do yet? Let's see if it gives me anything else. Nope. It's got nothing else there. Only this. Oh, that was that. This was, um, that's just telling them about that meeting, that press meeting. Hmm. Right, so that's that. So we haven't I haven't got any more information yet. I I did try I tried and tried and tried and I'm going to have to sign up to one of these accounts where it gives me a security on my internet but I can also set my location for somewhere in the USA so I can get the information that way because a lot of, because I'm not in the USA I can't get all the information all the time and I'd love to know how all these people are getting this information what site they go to but um it's not looking good. The search is still going on. I'll just see if there's anything on YouTube. See if there's any updates on YouTube. Which I don't think there will be. No. No, there isn't. Oh, yeah, and it's this. But we'll just see. I think it's just literally going over what we've just. To search for any sign of Elijah. Two Rivers Police Chief saying we are exploring all possibilities. And we have now passed the 80 hour mark in this little boy's disappearance in Two Rivers. 12 News Kendall Keys live at the Manitowoc County Courthouse and Kendall, the boy's mother, as well as a man, are both being held on child neglect charges.
Katrina Bauer, who is Elijah's mom, and a man named Jesse Vang both appeared in court. We learned Elijah's mom would send him to Vang's home to be disciplined. Both are being held on charges of child neglect at this point and had separate bail hearings. Vang's address matches the apartment building in Two Rivers, where we've watched investigators focus a lot of their attention during the search for Elijah. During the hearing for the boy's mother, the district attorney said she sent Elijah to stay with Vang to be punished. She intentionally sent that child for disciplinary reasons for more than a week to the residence. She was aware of the tactics used and the lack of care provided. Um, this was an intentional thing by her. And on at least two occasions um, during interviews, she has been provided false information on her whereabouts during the past week. And Kendall, some records in this case have been sealed? Correct, Joy. So usually court documents detailing allegations against a person are available when that person is charged or appears in court, but those documents have been sealed for now. The court commissioner set Katrina's bail at $15,000 and $20,000 for Vang. Both are still in jail. Meanwhile, Elijah is still missing. We also met some of Elijah's relatives we have not yet heard from. Their focus as this search continues on 12 News at 5. Once again, Kendall Keyes reporting live from Manitowoc County. Thank you. So let's get you caught up on what we know so far. The news first broke on Tuesday. That's when the Department of Justice activated the Amber Alert for Elijah. A caregiver reported last seeing him around 8 a.m. that morning. The police did not elaborate beyond that detail. That night, we saw the community mobilize multiple search efforts in and around Two Rivers. We saw investigators collecting evidence from a dumpster at an apartment building. We also spotted them collecting a shoe similar to the kind police say Elijah was last seen wearing. That search effort continued Wednesday when police made their first public comments on the case, reading a prepared statement but not answering any questions. And then on Thursday, the focus in on the search moved to a landfill in nearby Hilbert. News Chopper 12 capturing this exclusive video. Right now, police are asking people to check their surveillance or doorbell cameras for any signs of Elijah. We've also put the number up to the tip line on your screen. It is 844-267-6648. We've also posted Elijah's photo on our social media platforms and on the 12 News app for you to share. So that's the latest news on Elijah. Nothing. Yeah. So it's getting late here again. And, uh, I'm starting to feel tired now because I've, it's now getting up for like 11.30 at night. So thank you for being with me. If you're watching on replay, any, you'll find the links to the other, the other lives I've done on this little, this, this little boy in the description. And if you're watching on replay on YouTube, you can find my Twitter account where you will find all my lives, all the information on all my cases I do on there. So if you're watching from Twitter, please come and join me on YouTube because eventually I, I won't always be posting directly on Twitter. Sometimes I will, some cases I might, some cases I won't. Some cases I'll just do lives on YouTube and other where I'll just post little clickets onto Twitter. And sometimes I might do the whole streaming onto Twitter. I don't know. So please join me on YouTube as well so that you are always kept updated. And you can comment as well during the lives, and we can. I can accept. Say hello. Give you a shout out. Say hello. Be nice to see you on here. So, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. Well, as best as you can, because it is in a good situation. And I hope and pray they do find this little boy. I really do. But I can't see this happening. 
So anyway, I'm going to say good night and thank you all again for joining me. And share, give me a like, uh, leave a comment, share, subscribe. It's all free. You do not pay anything for this. Okay? So thank you again for joining me and good night.